Hi, I'm Stephanie Buffman, editor of the Gladwin County Record and Beaverton Clarion, and I'm here with Gladwin County Sheriff Mike Shea and Gladwin County Board of Commissioners Board Chair Josh Reed, and we're talking about some issues surrounding the public safety millage, and I'm going to let you start, Josh, and kind of give us an idea um, of what the county's current financial state looks like. Well, you know, I could start by going back to roughly 2008. Um, we started recognizing some challenges with our financials and we were doing reductions and consolidating departments, uh, for example, the zoning and the soil erosion in the building department. Uh, we've done wage concessions, we've done health care concessions. Um, you know, across the board, we have made cuts. We've got less people, less social security numbers that we deal with, um, and um, all of that could be viewed at gladwinco.com. If you go to gladwinco.com, uh, look at our dashboard, and we have our past six months financials uh, right there for you to review, uh, poke through. And if you're looking at those, you'll notice that if you go into the EVIP portion, Economic Vitality Incentive portion, that the state requires us to submit to them, you will see all of those cuts and reductions that we've done since then. You know, we've looked at merging offices and um, not having um, like one office or merging two offices into one, but the challenges, even structural challenges with our courthouse. So some of those just don't make sense. So as we were moving forward, we realized that, you know, it may be to our advantage to have an outside financial coordinator come in and run some numbers for us, evaluate the situation where we're at, how did we get here, what's going on, and what we found was some of our revenues from the state of Michigan have dropped significantly. So over the, the eight years, the, the county of Gladwin did not receive revenue sharing. We lost $3.4 million. So $3.4 million is hard to recover. Uh, and then property values dropped, so over a period of, uh, what do we have here actually, $184,000 that we've lost um, in the past five years, just in property values alone. That's the true cash of Gladwin County. The cities suffered the same way. Uh, so you start looking at some of these numbers and it very quickly becomes relevant. And, you know, we sat down with guys like uh, Mike Shea here and our sheriff and we started working on reductions and stuff and he's made some um, over in his office. Do you want to talk about some of those? Yeah, actually, um, when I took over as sheriff, uh, the, the number of personnel, uh, we've adjusted and aligned, uh, streamlined all kinds of budgets, uh, reduced uh, uh, a variety of line items as much as we could. Uh, we did some restructuring. In fact, uh, when I took over, there were actually 20 sworn personnel. Uh, that includes myself and the undersheriff as well, uh, in that 20. Uh, in the meantime, what we've done over the course of, of, of 10 years, um, we've got that down to 16. So we've had a 20% personnel reduction. Uh, that's as low as we can go and provide a 24-hour coverage. Um, as many of the community knows, we've only got a single detective, so you're down to one, obviously, that, that, that speaks for itself. And our sergeants, uh, through the course and evolution of changing and streamlining things, are actually road personnel that assist the county deputies, uh, not only supervising them on the road, you know, while they're taking and responding to complaints, um, but being numbers on the road that we need to utilize to provide a 24-hour coverage. So uh, there's four on days, four on afternoons, four on midnights, but of course these folks uh, need their time off. We still have to go by Fair Labor Standard Acts and, and there's uh, some collective bargaining things uh, that, that stand in, in, in place. And, and having said that, uh, our folks looking at geographically how they're paid uh, you'll be surprised to find that, uh, or maybe not surprised to find, that they're one of the lowest paid law enforcement agencies out there. So uh, I hear frequently some folks saying about how, how lucrative the job is. Uh, that couldn't be any further from the truth. Uh, I've done some of the wage comparisons myself. So having a 20% staff reduction and over that same 10 year period of time that I previously spoke about, while we lost 20% of our staff, our complaint load uh, went up 67%. For instance, during 2012, 
uh, our agency handled a little over 17,000 calls for assistance from the citizens. Uh, and go back 10 years when we had that 20%, we were handling 10,000 complaints approximately at that period of time. So, gives you some idea, down 20% in personnel, up 67% in complaints, and we're down to where any other uh, cuts would, would certainly be substantial for, for our only 24-hour law enforcement agency in the county. So, why a public safety millage versus a headway override or, say, a county operational millage? Good question. Very good question. Um, we have all collectively talked about it. We had a millage committee, um, and the sheriff set in on that. Uh, we had Neil, Neil Hammerbacher, our financial coordinator. He certainly did a lot of research for us, trying to figure out what some of the other communities are doing, what they look like, how much they're collecting. And to, to us, it's just cut and dry. Uh, we want this to be a public safety millage. We want that money going to the sheriff department. Let's face it, at the end of the day, uh, if we work collectively with the cities and levy $933,000 in change, um, which is, that equates to one mill, um, that helps both cities out, which does alleviate a little bit of strain on the sheriff's department. And that would, after the DDAs, allow $820,000 to go towards the sheriff's department, $1.2 million budget. That's just the sheriff department, not 911, not corrections, none of the others, just the sheriff department, road patrol, law enforcement. Uh, we want to guarantee that those over the next five years, that that money's there for him. And we think it's an honest effort, you know, by telling people what that money's going for. It, it's just cleaner. If we was to do a heavy override, then what do you use the money for? Where is it going? How do you distribute it? Uh, so we collectively felt that that was the best avenue. And that will help you achieve um, the recommend. The state recommends a certain percentage in your general fund. The state recommends a 13% fund equity. Um, that may get us there over a period of maybe three years. Let's remember that we are at the end of August. Mm -hmm. It's the 29th today. And as of yesterday, we have $1.745 million that we still have to appropriate back to our other funds that we've advanced. So. That being said, we do have some tax collection that's still going to happen. Um, but, you know, every time we, we think that there's light at the end of the tunnel, something else pops up, and we heard a rumor that there may be another state revenue cut of 22%. So at this past board meeting Tuesday, we passed another resolution encouraging our state, you know, not to cut counties another 22%. That equates to $95,000 to Gladden County and, and losses once again. So property values, um, you know, just right on down the line. And cost of business goes up. Let's face it, your electric bills go up, gas bills go up. We have capital maintenance that needs to be done before long on everything. You know, our buildings are, you know, getting tight. So just to do business, it's getting expensive. And we want to make sure that, you know, we have funding for the public safety sector. How many complaints did your department handle last year? There were 17,000, I believe, uh, 17,173 complaints that came in through Central Dispatch. Those get uh, uh, pushed out to the County Sheriff, Gladwin City, Beaver City, DNR, and MSP. Uh, what you'll find statistically is 80 to 85 percent of those are handled by the County Sheriff's deputies. Uh, or myself, for instance, uh, things like concealed weapons permits and the time and effort that it takes to do those on a monthly thing, I take on part of that. Each one of those are assigned a number. Uh, a, a, a quick uh, an analogy, it would be great if we just assigned something, a number, and then we just filed it away, but that's not the case. When it comes to concealed weapons licenses, the folks come in, they fill out a card so we can check criminal histories, that's the number that's assigned to that to make sure that we can track it all the way through so these folks can get their uh, concealed weapons license. Uh, in the meantime, there's fingerprints taken. I sit on a gun board once a month that takes well over an hour. Uh, there's a variety of applicants, anywhere from 50 to 70 uh, over the last uh, several years, monthly, that come through. Each one of those numbers takes a considerable amount of time. So, gives you an idea how under something gets assigned a number. Something could be as quick as a car deer accident at the front counter, or it can be as complex as uh, an armed robbery uh, of Sage Township, which is months and months, and that's just one of the single numbers of that 17,000.
And to the both of you, I would ask, if this doesn't pass, what do the cuts look like to public safety? Well, I'll speak first, I guess. I, I would, you know, I would have to say that there's been talk of significant cuts to public safety, and, and it's unfortunate. Um, that and departments that are affiliated with public safety, because if we have less um, patrolling going on, you know, everything starts to have its trickle-down effect. But nevertheless, you know, I, I would hate to see any further cuts to public safety. I, I think currently where we're at um, is tough enough for us to make do, and that's why we're coming before our constituents with this question, you know, which direction do you want us to go? We're, we're just not comfortable that uh, we want to sustain any more cuts on the public safety side of this, and, you know, I'll turn it over to Mike. Well, staffing levels, and I spoke to about it earlier, and that was with the reduction in the current staffing levels, are, are at a point that if financially um, we were faced with even more cuts, it has a direct connection with the services we provide and how many hours of the 24-hour day those services are provided, and even the things we're responding to. Uh, non-criminal things, uh, uh, vehicle maintenance, our, our VIN uh, inspection checks that we're out doing for folks and, and servicing and helping the community. Uh, some of the times you get in there where there's these uh, neighbors aren't getting along their property line disputes. We actually go out with the idea that those could escalate, but you know, those are just some examples of things that you know, we'll be just incapable of responding to. There'll be nobody to send. We've got to take care of the criminal things first. Uh, and again, there'd be a certain question as to how many hours a day we could cover. We've talked about the cuts to public safety. It sounds like this is very busy, very necessary department. And I know you've looked at all the other county budgets, uh, or all the budget for all these county departments. Um, any other departments you're looking at cutting? Any other options? I think people want to know if there are other options. Well, there's certainly other options out there that are tied into public safety because they're, they're just throughout the county, they, they are tied together in many different ways. Um, but none of which we feel are uh, what our constituents are going to want. And, and that's why we came up with this, you know, millage question. At the end of the day, there's only so much money to go around. And we've made so many cuts. Uh, you know, we have one maintenance guy doing all our buildings, one janitor doing all our buildings. Our clerk's been laid off. Uh, we, we've certainly, you know, made leaps and bounds trying to keep up with, you know, the cuts from the state and property values and the increases. So, uh, will we have to, and have we been, you know, trying to revamp how government works in Gladwin County? Absolutely. Uh, the sheriff and I probably see each other more than we want to trying to figure out, you know, what's our next step? You know, where can we go from here? So. Absolutely, this is all about our constituents and what they desire us to provide for them. And I think we're doing everything we can do to work together and make the best with what we have. And you mentioned that um, after approximately three years, you think that you'd be able to raise that 10 to 13 percent general fund um, level that the state recommends. And this is going to be levied for five years. Mm -hmm. At what point, since this is public safety millage, will there will we see enhancements? Will there be enhancements for public safety if it's, the revenue keeps you know coming in for two more years? I'll speak for myself as being a, a commissioner currently, because I can't I can't speak for current commissioners and or commissioners you know after myself you know unless I'm still on the board obviously. But in my mind, you know. If, in fact, we reach our 13%, that's good. That's, that gives us a little bit of cushion if something bad goes happens or bad happens. Um, but at the end of the day, we need to have a little bit of money set aside. And I don't know what that comfort money is going to be, but the sheriff and I were just talking about, you know, what if we had a natural disaster? What if a tornado came through here and we had to call the National Guard in and we needed contractors out there pushing houses out of the roadways? We currently have no cash available. We're going to have to borrow that money, and who's going to be writing the checks until we have the money available? Um, so in, at the end of the day, this is all about not being greedy. This is about scraping by and making sure that we're doing what our constituents want from us and making sure that those funds are there if need be. Well, I, I'd just like to say, uh, down the road, 
If the demands for service continue to increase, the only reason that we've gotten by so far is some uh, creative scheduling that we've done, keeping the Fair Labor Standards and Act, the bargaining agreements, and so on and so forth. Uh, the, the, uh, the, the group of folks that we have doing the job right now are, are doing a tremendous job. And without technology and some of those things, we wouldn't be able to keep up with the demands for service. For instance, over that 10-year period, if we go back many years, when I started in law enforcement in Gladwin County, we were still utilizing a typewriter. We had a single typewriter, uh, you know? So that wasn't the most efficient, for those of you young people watching, ask your parents. Um, for uh, the rest of us that know what those were, uh, and had a typing instructor in high school and so on and so forth, uh, the computer age has really helped us and made us more efficient. We're utilizing that technology uptown to get our uh, reports done and have a records management system in Saginaw and some of those things going on. Uh, instead of buying our own, we're using the, the internet and the social things, uh, social media and that kind of stuff to our benefit. That's the only reason we can keep up. So my hopes are in the future, even with that technology, uh, we're going to need something in the future, but for right now it's a matter of survival. I think that's the easiest way to put it. Speaking of technology, you know, just to throw this out there, we didn't foresee our servers crashing a couple weeks ago, and just to repair that one and purchase another server was in the neighborhood of $7,000. Mm -hmm. and, and that's just to have the backup and fix on the current one that we have, which all of that we need, and we know that we have, I think we have Windows 7 or something <laughs> crazy or 95 on the computer that I use at the core house. So we're in dire need of improvements down the road. I want to talk about the future. Can, can I just... Absolutely. Um, not, not just me, but the folks that work for the community at the Sheriff's Office have put a effort towards it. We're finding that our best and brightest law enforcement officers and those that know Glad One best are the folks that were born and bred right here in our own backyard. Uh, we got two fantastic, well, actually more than two fantastic, with Skills Northern Christian and their Learning Academy. Uh, but the uh, educational system is, is quality. Our kids are going off to college, and who doesn't want them to come back and work in their community? So as an agency, we put this recruiting effort in place. Uh, and you'll find that some of the officers working for you at the Sheriff's Office are the same ones that were your students in school, or the same family names you saw growing up, and that kind of thing. But to keep those kids local, we have to offer them an okay wage, at least, uh, and some of the concessions that have made, been made, uh, for instance, uh, like on a retirement aspect, any new deputy brought into the sheriff's office uh, is going to get about 60 cents on the dollar for retirement, uh, any new one coming in. Now that's tough for me to, A, recruit your next generation of children that are getting out of our local school district when they can go to a neighboring county and get a full retirement. Um, so those are some of the things that are challenging for me as the sheriff to get and recruit and maintain the, the retention of those employees uh, because they're good kids, they're smart kids, they're your neighbors, they're probably your sons and daughters. Um, so that's going to be challenging as we go through these fiscal times. So uh, it's those kind of things that makes uh, my administrative staff's uh, job tough uh, and that kind of stuff. So we got to get back in a competitive level, you know, it's it's just, we got good folks, they're in our own backyards, but to retain those folks and to get them hired on board and to make this job uh, attractive to them, it needs to be, have the uh, health care attachment, it needs to have, uh, you know, retirement attachment, and it needs to have a decent pay attached, quite frankly. Uh, it's not an easy job. Turn on the television, you know what I'm talking about, so. No, no, not to get too worded, sorry about that. That's just fine. Anything else you want to say? I hope that we've covered everything here. And as always, you know, we're, we're in this together. The whole community's in this together. Uh, we want to hear from you. We want your input. We appreciate some of these questions that we was able to, uh, hopefully we answered them all, actually. Um, but just uh, hang in there. We're in it together.